strictly from my perspective. In the 80s, we talked about obturation, seal the portals of exit and it will heal. Mm -hmm. In the 90s and early 2000s, everything was about instrumentation. In the last five, six, seven years, we hear more about debridement. When it comes to success in endodontics, clinical success, what do you think is the most important? Obturation, what we call, you used to call cleaning and shaping, and now what we're calling debridement. Which one of those three steps do you think is clinically most important? You know, now, I, know say, that I know that they are all important. No, but what do, we, what do we do the worst job of? Disinfection. Disinfection, down. debridement. Yeah. Ben knows this. He, he's bringing up a question I'm surprised nobody's brought up. Uh, you know this guy perfectly. So I'm in Amman, Jordan, two weeks ago, and I'm sitting with Ed Koyes, who you know perfectly. Right. And Ed said to me during dinner, he said, when does endodontics start? And I thought he was being funny, but, you know, Ed's serious. He's a yeah. department chairman at, at St. Joseph's in Beirut. So I said, that's an interesting question, because he said, Cliff, you always said that endodontics should parallel the extraction. So to play off of Ben, why is the extraction so successful? because it serves to remove the pulp 100% of the time. There's not even any debate. You break a root tip, good protocols, if you have to lay a flap to go in and get a root tip, pull it out because it could be a nidus for future infection. So the extraction removes everything out of the uninstrumental portions. So Ben's right, you know, what do we hear? Somebody just told us today, there's a great paper that's just being published and it showed a nine year failure and they found it was due to microorganisms in dental tubules. I haven't seen the journal for February yet. <coughs> but, but Ben's right, because if you look at the micro CTs, and we knew this actually back in Hess's time, you look at the complexities of endodontics and you think about, we're sticking little instruments in here and then we get a glide path and then we're shaping this. I'm thinking, my God, we're really doing an incredible thing. There is fins and anastomosing cul-de-sacs lateral canals, furcal canals, I mean they're everywhere and we're touching a fraction of the anatomy with our instruments. So really with all this shaping that's brought us the, the consistency and the dupe, you know, mastery is, is replicating the result over and over and over because you say so. We're still deficient on our disinfection. And a lot of dentists now they're getting, this, you know, we used to spend, we said clean and shaving because it happened over like days. But now you can shape, like with wave one, <coughs> here's a quick sidebar, but it'll come back to him. And dentists are funny people, and I'm one of them, so I'm a funny person too. But there was, uh, the guys that invented wave one did collectively about 6,000 cases on patients of record. And we can tell you that it takes about four passes with any instrument for that instrument to achieve length. The biggest problem with wave one is people are just trying to plow to the length and the flutes get loaded up and then you get a lot of torsional loads on the file and we can see breakage. So if you pull the thing out, clean the blades, irrigate, recap, irrigate, and take another little three, four millimeters, another little three and four, and another three and four, I mean, roots are about nine to 15, so it's about three or four passes. So we found out in four years, it's three to four passes, it's 50 seconds to a minute and a half. What does that say, back to his question? we should have a lot of emphasis on moving reagents in complex spaces. And our success rates have to get better if we just try a little bit more. So I'd like to probably to close off on that, not to close the questions, but um, there's a lot of ideas that are coming. Uh, some are very interesting, some are exciting, beyond imagination, and, and some are just, uh, you know, bullshit. But we have to have all of it, you know, I guess, to move forward. But we really need to spend time chair side cleaning, disinfecting. And you have saved so much time in your shaping, but a lot of dentists just spit a cone because the radiograph looks like a white line, looks great, and it's going to pack out and look great, but is it clean? And my assertion is in all this days and age of mechanical instrumentation, most of the canals, I think, are dirty. That's what I think. So I really would like everybody to be a great disinfector because you have a little bit of chair time, it's easy to do, it's low tech, you don't have to be Leonardo da Vinci, you were already Leonardo da Vinci when you scouted and negotiated curvature and secured the canal and catheterized, that's when you were skillful. Shaping just pretty much is in the bag if you got the, the glide path. 
I mean, so we have no reason not to disinfect. Do you want to end before I go to that one? one well, last I, I just wanted to hear what you had to say because I think disinfection is probably a figment of our imagination because the reagents can't actually reach the bacteria unless we remove the tissue in these fins and isthmuses Bingo. and things. Yeah. And, that, and I think that's the one area we're really deficient in. Ben travels a lot, but he'll tell you that almost any Congress we go to around the world, doesn't matter what the country is, the huge emphasis around the world right now at all the major endodontic meetings is disinfection. And like when he was at Rome, we were at Rome, so he was on a day, day one, and what do you think day one was? Irrigation and disinfection. It was shaping, and day two was <laughs> disinfection, and day three was obturation. Isn't that what he did? Yeah. So, you know, my assignment was shaping, his assignment was, he was on a, a panel of four guys that took the whole day, and the, different shapes and different disinfection ideas, but there's a lot of emphasis on this, and it makes me very, very happy, because it's been a long, long time coming.